What's up everybody? This is Anthony White. I'm getting ready to show you a way that I prepare meals for the week. Um, this is an idea I came up with because I noticed bodybuilders are always eating like a large pile of rice and then like a meat and a vegetable, right? And that seems to be the go-to meal for a lot of bodybuilders. Well, I thought about it and, you know, really, if you cut the meat up into small pieces and just mix the rice and the vegetables and the meat all together, you basically end up with Chinese food. So this is my healthy take on bodybuilding Chinese food. Here we go. So what you'll see here on the table is I have most, if not all, the ingredients and the utensils that you will need to make this meal right here on the table. Uh, except for I do have a frying pan on the stove and a medium-sized saucepan with a lid. So anyway, um, really I like to start with the rice because it takes the longest to cook. So I like to get that going first. I measure out three cups of rice. There's one. Let's put that right there in our saucepan. Just grab another cup of rice here. And our last cup of rice. And put that right in there. Now since we used three cups of rice, you need to use double the amount in water, so that's going to be six cups of water to go in the rice. Uh, one of these bottles, the water from the store, actually has three cups of water in it, so I don't even measure it. I just dump in a whole bottle, so that's three cups of water. Dump in my second bottle. And you got six cups of water in your rice. Now you're ready to start the stove. I turn the rice on high until it begins to, you know, come to a simmer or a boil. It just needs to start bubbling. We'll walk away from that rice there for a minute. Okay, while we're waiting for our rice to heat up, let's go ahead and get this pork ready. Okay, I like to use a 13 by 9 kick pan. Take our meat here. I would typically use six of these uh, five ounce seasoned pork chops, but since it is Lent, I have pre prepared a piece of fish for one of the meals for Friday. So today, instead of six pieces of pork, I will only be doing five in the oven. Okay, so the oven is preheated to 400, and so we're going to go ahead and uh, take our pork pan here and just throw it right in the old oven. So, let's get this oven opened up here. Alright, it's nice and hot. Just go right in there with that. There we go. And then we'll close that up. Okay, let's take note of the time here. It's 8 o'clock, so the pork will be coming out in 20 minutes at 400, so that's about 820. Pork's got to temp out at 160, so we'll uh, probably do it just a couple minutes longer just to be safe, and I'll check it with a meat thermometer. Rice at this point is starting to bubble enough to where I think we'll go ahead and put the lid on it and we're gonna dial this back to oh, about three so about a medium temperature and that's just gonna basically and sit there and simmer um, this is a brown rice a whole rice it's not one of them instant ones so you have to uh, 
you have to cook it for I think 35 to 45 minutes I usually go about 35 to 40 uh, just for, so that it's tender enough but it just sits there and it simmers for that long so again we'll take note of the time it's 8.03 so we'll just say 40 minutes so like 8.43 okay so the meat's coming out at approximately 8.20 and the rice is coming out at 8.43. So while I'm waiting for the rice to boil and the pork to cook, I went ahead and I ran off and uh, I ate a large cake and then went and got liposuction real quick and then came back home. And then I also took the time to set up the containers for the end of this meal one way you start serving it out so that way it's ready to go okay so it's been about 24 minutes when there's that many pieces of pork I go longer than 20 minutes just because it seems to take longer to cook them so they're probably about the temperature I like them they might even be a little overdone so I'm gonna take a meat thermometer here and I'm just going to check one of these bad boys. I usually pick the thickest one, but they're all about the same size in this case. And you really want to run this meat thermometer lengthwise through the pork without it coming through and sticking out. It can be kind of challenging, but if you don't get it deep into the piece of meat, it doesn't read accurately. So this is blowing clear, plat, clear past 160, all the way up to 180, so I actually overcooked them a little bit, but that's fine, I'm fine with that. I prefer them at 160, but whatever, it's all good. So a little bit closer to that 20 minute cook time would have been better today. It just depends on meat thickness and, you know, just other variables. So I'm going to go ahead and let that meat rest just for a second our rice is still on the stove there going to town and uh, yeah we'll just uh, let it sit there for a second now that the meat has had time to rest I'm gonna go ahead and put it all on a plate here and start cutting it into small pieces while that rice continues to cook here's that fish I uh, pre-cooked earlier it's a pretty big slab of tilapia Uh, all these pieces of pork here on this plate. I like to make headway on this, getting these sliced up while the rice continues to cook. Anyway, yeah, so you got six different uh, serving spaces, six pieces of meat. So you do the math. So each container gets one piece of meat. So I'm going to go ahead and start cutting up the meat and putting it into the containers. So I've cut it all up into fine pieces. So five ounces of pork looks about like that once it's all cut up. That's about how much pork you're going to get in one meal. My cat Cheese has decided he wants to get in on this too. So I'm going to go ahead and be a nice guy and feed the kitty a small piece of pork. Will it make him go away? I highly doubt it. If anything, he'll return for more. I decided to get rid of that big piece of fish here. That was a massive piece of fish, I might add. There's probably a better knife you can use for this, but I'm not worried about it. Now we need to take a break from that for a second, because the rice is actually ready to come off of the stove. So I'm just going to pull that over to a less heated burner there. 
I'm going to shut that burner off. I went with 43 minutes today on the rice. And so it's just cooling a little bit over there on the stove while I finish cutting up these meats here. So I got the meat all cut up and distributed evenly, as you can see. And we're going to go ahead and turn our attention back to the stove. Now it's time to get the skillet in the mix here. We're going to go ahead and uh, put that on medium. The skillet should be heated up now. And I just want to add the smallest amount of butter. Um, in traditional vegetable fried rice, you would put just tons of butter on the skillet. But obviously we're trying to keep things healthy, so I go really light on the butter. But we still want to have it in there. So the butter's sizzling and melting. And I'm wanting to get the frozen vegetables going. And you can do fresh vegetables. It just takes a whole lot longer to cook them. You know, honestly, I may end up adding more butter because it's all but disappeared. Well, we'll let that go for a little while. I'm going to add a little bit of this in there, too. It's a different kind of a frozen vegetable. Why not? Stir it around a little bit here and there. These frozen bags of vegetables cook way quicker than fresh vegetables. If you're going to do fresh vegetables, you got to get them going a lot earlier, like about the same time that you start the rice, because fresh vegetables take almost 45 minutes to cook down, you know, at a medium heat, unless if you want to just fry them and burn them. Okay, so these vegetables are cooked most of the way here. I had to turn the burner up a little bit just to get it uh, kind of going a little bit more, but I've turned it back down to a medium temperature. Um, Basically, okay, they've been going for about seven minutes now, and they're basically almost done. So I'm going to scoot them into a pile over here. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more butter to it, just before we add the rice. Just because it's gotten very dry, so I'm just going to add a little bit more butter. Just a little bit. Okay, now uh, that butter's melting, let's go ahead and get our rice on. Just going to take and I'm going to dump the whole thing right into the pan. It's quite a bit of rice. So we got the rice all in a big pile here. We're going to scoop the egg or the vegetables up into a pile over here. And that leaves this little open space right here where something can go. And that's where I'm going to crack an egg and put it right there. Remember now we're still cooking on a medium temperature. Okay. I take a fork and I start whisking the egg, basically just scrambling it. Then once you have a scrambled egg consistency, you know, you just kind of let it sit and cook. I'm going to stir the vegetables just a little bit so they'll cook evenly. And I'm even going to try to stir this big rice blob just a little bit so we can get that cooked evenly too. Uh, while it's cooking here on this medium temperature I just kinda try to stir things in their own little pile keeping them together. 
and I do that for oh I don't know I think this whole process lasts maybe about four to five minutes once the eggs just before it gets completely hard you want to go ahead and mix the whole thing together so now we're going to just stir this whole mess together it's kind of hard to stir such a big pile you know uh, you can do two pans you know if it makes it easier for you I chose to use one pan tonight because I thought it would be easier that way to show you what I do but you can you know just as easily break this up into two pans so it's easier to turn things and whatnot now it's thoroughly been turned and so we're just gonna let it sit for like a minute or two cooking just like this okay so it's been a couple minutes I'm gonna go ahead and give this a good stir just make sure everything evenly cooks looking really good we got a nice consistency here with the egg and the vegetables definitely looking like a vegetable fried rice so I think I'm gonna let that sit for two more minutes and then I'm gonna turn the burner off and give it another stir and just kinda let it continue to cook for another minute alrighty then it's been a couple more minutes here we're gonna go ahead and turn that burner off now and just give it another stir and let it sit for a second let's go ahead and we'll Turn our burner off. Give this bad boy another stir. And I'm gonna let it sit just a second and then we'll do the finishing touches. Okay, now that our mixture is finished, we'll place it on a hot pad over here. That way we don't burn our table. And I'm gonna take a giant serving spoon and basically all I'm gonna do here is distribute it evenly amongst my six meals. So, I uh, usually just I count the spoonfuls, so I might guesstimate that each one will take about four scoops. So I'll just do four modest scoops for each dinner and start there. If I have leftovers of uh, rice here at the end, I'll distribute it e evenly amongst all the dinners with what's left over. So I actually overshot it a little bit with four scoops because this one doesn't have any rice at all. So I'm just going to take a little bit from each meal, put it over there, and call it a day. And they're all, you know, more or less even. That's what we want. And there you have it. One, two, three, four, five, six meals for the week. I choose to eat these meals right before I go to work. That way I don't have to do any cooking. Um, I would suggest letting these meals rest for a little while, except, of course, the one you're going to eat right now. And let them rest and cool a little bit before you put your lids on them to store them. Then when you're ready to store your dinners, put the ones you're going to eat sooner in the week in the fridge and the ones later in the week in the freezer. And then you're all set. I've built some quality muscle with this and I've also lost a substantial amount of fat weight. Uh, I really like this meal. I think it's fairly easy to do and it creates a lot of less cooking throughout the week. So anyway, if you liked this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. And I will see you all later.